Songbirds are a good model for studying the relation between learning and neuronal replacement because they have a learned behavior that is well defined. We know when the song is acquired, we can quantify how much has been learned, and we know which are the cells that hold that information. People working with the song system were constrained in that we did not have a ready way to interfere with gene expression, to alter the expression of genes that we suspect might be involved with these two processes of a neuronal replacement and song learning. So there had been a great need to come up with transgenic songbirds that enabled us to slip new genes or new gene regulators into the DNA of songbirds. And the gene we used uh, to see, uh, just as a proof of concept approach, was a green fluorescent protein. These are zebra finches, native to Australia. Uh, the bird on the left is expressing the, uh, the fluorescent protein, and you can see that in the eyes and the legs, and the bird on the right is uh, not expressing it as the control bird and uh, is not expressing the green in the eyes or the legs. The way this is done is by tying the DNA for the gene and promoter to a, to a viral vector that then ships it into the cell and into the nucleus. And once it is there, it will be passed on from one generation to the next. We now have, uh, we have three uh, parents that are producing a bunch of these right now. So we call them founders. Um, and some of them have different levels of intensity than others with the green fluorescence. That has to do with where the gene gets inserted into the genome. At least that's what we believe. The, the, the process of bringing a foreign gene into a body uh, is always fraught with potential dangers. I mean, the gene might be spliced into the DNA and might be expressed, but it then might play all kinds of havoc with the health of the animal or it's the normal way in which it develops or the way it behaves. The transgenic birds we've done so far with green fluorescent protein uh, uh, breeding has not been impaired. The health of the animals doesn't seem to be hindered in any obvious way. Their developmental stages are normal. When neural replacement was discovered at Rockefeller some 25 years ago, it was the first evidence that we ever had that neurons lost in the adult vertebrate brain might be replaced. That seemed uh, something totally out of reach. Up to the present, people are still told if you've had a serious problem with your brain, whether it is a neurodegenerative disorder or an accident, things like that, that there's very little really that the neurologist can do and he will tell you, you get a good nurse and pray. And if we can play the game of neuronal replacement and use the brain's own neural stem cells to do the job, <clears throat> then this is a new game.